As most of the TV industry is currently locked down at home, mainly watching television, I reckon I could have a really good guess at what overused plot device winds us all up the most. Any ideas? So, enlarging the reflection in her eye. Enhance. Sorry. Enhance. I'll enhance that. Enhance reflection. Enhance, then forward, frame by frame. Magnify that death sphere. Why is it still blurry? Enhance image. What? Stupid. If it was real, I could just use my 5D Mark II and enhance the HD pictures up to brand new R5 8K loveliness. But if you've been on Facebook recently, and who hasn't, you might have seen an advert for a piece of software that promises to do just that. Video Enhance AI. Artificial intelligence from Topaz. I'm intrigued. This I've got to see. So I've bought a copy so you don't have to. Enhance. It's not cheap. $300. Although they have got a deal running at the moment that knocks $100 off presumably because they've just launched a Mac version for creatives like us. So 900 megabytes and a password later, I'm itching to up all my old rubbish SD videos to HD. And the interface is rather simple. You just drag your video onto the middle, choose the quality and hit go. It's not immediately obvious what the quality settings mean. Input quality, is that the quality of your footage or the quality that you want to obtain? The manual seems to imply you dial in to match the quality of your footage. But what's G-I-A-I, gear, or Artemis? CG obviously means computer graphics. There's nothing for it. I'm just going to have to run this one four times to see which one is best. I've chosen a 30-year-old, very low-def promo from Sky News, mainly because I'm in it and I'd like to preserve the memory of my manly figure running through Trafalgar Square, dragging Nadia, the sound recorders, behind me. Shout out to Nadia. So let's see if we can bring this up to HD. I run it four times with each quality setting going from 720x576 to 1920x1080 takes about five seconds of frame, which on a 22 second clip doesn't take too long, even on my aging Mac. While it's working, you do get a side by side comparison of each frame and you can zoom in to see if it's doing anything. Happily, you can also choose to clip in and out points if you don't want to process the whole video. And even more usefully, you can set up a list of clips at the bottom to batch process, each with different settings, which is exactly what I did. Now at this point, I fully expected that I'd have the opportunity to have a good laugh at the whole notion of enhancing your footage with artificial intelligence. I mean, that only happens in the movies, right? But actually, this 30-year-old footage does look a little better. I wasn't too impressed with the two Artemis settings, but this GIHQ and GCG do look as though they're doing something. The picture looks cleaner and the edges look more defined. Looking at Nadia's jumper and the umbilical cable between us, there's a noticeable improvement, not just in resolution, but also picture quality. Far from taking the mickey, I think this deserves a closer look. So let's give it some proper SD footage and up res to HD. It's at this point that I noticed the first issue. This was originally shot interlaced for broadcast. And while Video Enhance AI can't cope with interlaced footage, if there are any artifacts on your video left over from a poor deinterlace, then this software is going to enhance those artifacts as well. So with fast movement, it can look worse. But I could see, with nice progressive material to deal with, there is a definite and noticeable improvement. Let's take a closer look at just one shot. Again, I tried all four quality settings on this shot, and I still think I prefer the one labelled for computer graphics. Certainly for SD footage anyway. I think you could probably drop a few shots of this sort of quality into an HD shoot, and they wouldn't totally jump out as rubbish. So far, this program is doing what they promise. But how far can you push it? Can I up this SD footage to 4K or even 8K? Like all good things, you can obviously push it too far. And to my eyes, it's starting to look a little plastic, unreal, almost like it's painted. 
And if we really start to pixel peep, I'm starting to notice a strange patterning of lighter patches. It reminds me of the halftone technique they used to use in old newspapers. You're probably too young. But because these little dots are lighter, it has the effect of lifting the mid-tones of your video, which of course is where most of the detail is. So overall, I think this program does a really good job of up from standard definition to high definition. It's certainly acceptable, and I'm really surprised. But what about HD to 4K? I think that might be of more interest to video professionals. Let's look at some clean and detailed images. As before, I tested all four quality settings, and again, decided I liked the GI AI CG mode the best. When converting HD to 4K, it took my Mac about 35 seconds for each frame. So it's not a quick process, but there's definitely improvement to the overall sharpness and definition of the details. The HD is on the left here and the 4K on the right. It's more than a simple upgrade of resolution. Looking at them side by side and magnified, you can see the railings down at the bottom and the detail around the windows is definitely looking better. Now one of the reasons I chose this shot is I have the original, which was actually shot in 4K. So we can now compare the Video Enhance AI version of 4K again on the right, with the original 4K now on the left. Hmm. It's close, but the original on the left obviously looks better, especially on those railings, but even for contrast. But what happens if we take that original 4K and go all the way to 8K? Well, the first thing I should point out is that on my 2017 MacBook Pro, this move takes about 139 seconds per frame. So this little 10 second clip took 10 and a half hours to convert. No, really. Again, the 4K is on the left and the 8K is on the right. And you can now see there's a noticeable improvement. It's the same sort of improvement we saw going from HD to 4K. This is impressive. But when you're starting with HD footage, good, clean, detailed footage, the differences in the results you get are much smaller than when you start with poor quality SD footage. And with SD, it's much better to use CG mode as the quality settings, and in HD, it's better to use HQ mode, because those differences are much smaller. HQ mode starts to shine. And it's when I was looking at those differences, I started to wonder, could I get a similar up result just using Final Cut Pro. So I attempted to copy what I thought was happening. That's a little raise in the mid-tones, a small amount of noise reduction, which also has the advantage of softening the edges and reducing the aliasing, and then finally, a small amount of sharpening, all on a 4K timeline. And this is where my testing started to fall apart, because it's possible to get a result which is very close to Video Enhance AI. And that's quite annoying because I already had Final Cut Pro and that costs about the same as Video Enhance AI. It's also many, many times quicker. So I get some of my life back. I went back to see if I could get the same effect on the earlier SD to HD pictures I'd been so impressed with. This time it was much harder to get close. Video Enhance was doing something and I couldn't easily match with Final Cut. Maybe the extra power of Resolve would find it easier. Well, it's definitely better than Final Cut, but still not as good as the result from Video Enhance AI. I'm almost relieved it's doing something. So at the end of the day, was buying Video Enhance AI worth anything? Well, sort of. You see, I think this is a program of two halves. It does a great job of converting standard definition pictures to high definition in a way I couldn't replicate with Final Cut or Resolve. It pulls details out of ropey pictures and genuinely impressed me with the watchable results. However, as the quality of your pictures gets better, the advantages of using this program reduce. Scaling from HD to 4K, or even 4K to 8K, is a noticeable improvement, but also one I could get just by using Final Cut or Resolve in a relatively small number of stages. Now obviously, if you use your own editor, then you have control over the picture quality and the compression settings, which you just don't get with Video Enhance AI. And that alone would rule it out for most professional use. Now, I have no idea how much machine learning or artificial intelligence is going on here. But if you're somebody who 
doesn't want to fiddle around with the settings in your editor. Or maybe you've got too much money or too much time. Or much more likely, you just want to upgrade your 30-year-old SD footage to show the kids. Then this program is definitely doing something. Still think I want an R5 though. Thanks for watching. Thank you.